so we're back at the portrait here and um, it's a little further along than the last time you saw it um, but now that we're in the midway process here of completing it I want to show you some of the techniques I use to uh, develop uh, and enrich the color and add more detail so this portrait here this 8x10 um, commission portrait of this dog is about halfway done. Um, I have quite a few colors uh, saturated within. I have the values pretty well described on the top of the dog's head and then contrast with the background as well. What I'm going to do is go in and um, add a little more contrast to these areas here with the, the fur and uh, add a little more pop to the highlights as well. So we're going to start with our clear glazing medium, matte medium, and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, raw umber dark, a stark brown, probably, probably my most uh, used color uh, of everything I use here, and uh, just work the uh, glaze into it. and. Now, adding a little bit of detail to this, um, and I want to overall add some darkness to this area, but still preserve some of the details from my sketch. So that's what we're working on right now. There we go little darker and these are just some subtle nuances that you can uh, create with a very light glaze and then a little more on the hair on this side And I use my finger to blend that in. There's no problem with that. Um, now I still need to darken this side, the dog's ear overall, quite a bit. And it has an overall pinkish tone, so I'm going to add a little bit of a lizard crimson to that. And on my palette, I work that out of the brush you can see I um, kind of rub off any excess off to the side and then work it into the general area here of this clear matte medium uh, just a bit of white which will help to intensify the pink aspect of the color as, as I've said before uh, white will tend to cool things down quite a bit and we'll add that to this left ear as well. I don't want to darken the value though. Got it pink enough, but not quite dark enough to make a difference. And we'll just add this overall to the ear. And we'll be going over that again later with more highlights as well. Um, so it's a matter of pushing and pulling, you know, we're um, adding uh, darkness and then we're, I would say, subtracting from the darkness by adding highlights, but there is that aspect. It's kind of a give and take process. And again, while you're painting, you might not exactly know what's going to happen next, but it's an adventure and you take it one step at a time. You, uh, you have a blueprint, and that's your photograph, your source photograph. Or if you're painting from life, the subject that's in front of you. Um, but you have a, a very good idea of what's going to happen next, and that's the way I look at it. I know eventually I have to get this painting to look like the photograph, you know, minus some of the changes intentionally that I made, like taking out the background of the uh, car door 
and then the car seat that the dog is sitting on. But other than that, I want to, as much as possible, uh, faithfully duplicate what I'm seeing here in the photo onto the painting. I see, you know, overall I still need to darken the, the body of the dog quite a bit more. Um, so it's a matter of darkening overall areas and yet still preserving some of the more minute details found in the textures of the fur. And overall I can see this is going to have to get darkened and so let's use this color we have right now for that purpose. And we'll just add a, another glaze to this whole area. And we don't want to darken it too much. We'll probably have to go back over it with some highlights anyway. We might also have to um, cool down the color with a little more opacity with white paint. So I do notice that this is overall a little bit warmer in tone than what the photograph shows me. Um, so I want to make sure that I do tone that down enough so that it's not competing with these really nice uh, highlighted warm areas up on the forehead. And I'll take some of this um, color I have here and maybe cool it down just a bit with a pair of ultramarine blue just a tad and um, uh, blend that in and then go over this part of the fur, which is cooler in tone. And I will be going over this with some highlights, so there are some areas that are darker than they should be, but that's alright because um, I don't want this painting entirely uh, translucent. A little bit of opacity does give it a richness as well as long as you don't overdo it. So use the glazes to get an overall tonality, to preserve detail, um, to get some richness and depth, but then the opaque layers uh, cut off some of that graininess, which tend to make it look a little more watery and less substantive um, without. So you do have to have a little bit of opaque paint in there. Um, the glazing technique is just one of the tools in your arsenal to build up a painting that doesn't mean that you can't use some opaque layers as well in the right places and at the right times. And I mean in the right times, I'm talking about later in the stages of your painting. That's a good time to start introducing more opaque layers, but not completely opaque, just uh, a little more paint ratio to medium. Um, so, just added a bit more medium. So over time, the medium will dry on your palette or start to get tacky and it's not as fun to work with. Um, so with that, we want to uh, preserve the fluidity of the paint. Just, you know, add some fresh medium when you need it. I'm noticing this will have to get quite a bit lighter. But I think I still didn't go too dark have a chance to lighten that up with some highlights later and it is hard to tell sometimes uh, what needs to be darker at any given time because uh, you, know, you have an overall sense of the values in the painting that as you're you know, starting at light to dark you don't know what the darkest value is it's good as a rule of thumb to get a darker area like I have with the eye and the nose so I have a benchmark uh, to know what else needs to get darker in comparison to that value. You know, it's like the areas here underneath the ear are actually uh, pretty close to the darkness then of the eye and the nose. So I can tell that I do have to darken that quite a bit. And uh, I'm going to just grab a little bit of um, those are in crimson and the Romber dark here, that mix, get it just a little more saturated on that side and work that in. And uh, yeah, that'll that'll be nice. 
Now, we're getting a little more of the tonality of the, the dog, and um, yeah, I like the direction this is taking overall. And it is a work in progress, so it's not going to look just like it ought to look until you get it to that stage where it's close to being finished. I'm going to darken up here in this area between the uh, fur up there and the white area and then this going into the more sepia tone reddish area. gives a little more delineation. Add that same color to this point here, which is kind of a similar color and value. Not to waste the paint, but to utilize it whenever we can. And down here as well, I just try to keep utilizing that same color for whatever I can. Now, the brush a little bit and get it to a point. It's always good to take your brush and twist it a little bit and get it to a nice point if you can. And then we're going to go in and darken up in there just by the forehead to the upper right of the dog's eye. Again, you'll have to twist this on your palette and get it to a point. get a couple of those darker values and uh, little by little will take shape. We have a lot of detail here on this photo so um, it could technically take a very long time to paint this portrait and make it look just like the photo. I don't think I'm going to do that um, but I will make it look really nice and look like a beautiful detailed painting. I've done uh, portraits like this as well with colored pencil, and that's a whole different medium there because you can't use so many layers, you have to just move basically from left to right. But acrylic gives you the opportunity to work the whole painting at once, slowly in stages. Um, it gives you a better sense of overall the feeling like you have it done, even when it's part way in between just because you have so many layers down and you have the overall sense of the uh, color scheme taking place you, know, you don't have like a large area that's white and it seems intimidating that way when you have to work um, you know, drawing from left to right just by necessity uh, so acrylic is very versatile in that way it, it doesn't tend to get all the crispness of a colored pencil drawing, uh, but it comes close and it, it definitely can get a greater sense of richness um, than a drawing can. Although I'm sure there's some that would disagree with me on that and there are some very excellent uh, colored pencil artists that do a fantastic job of really making their drawings look painterly. Uh, one of the artists I could give credit to would be Jesse Lane. Jesse Lane does these fabulous large-scale uh, colored pencil drawings in the style of Caravaggio. Very chiaroscuro uh, figures lit. <laughs>